Hey guys, today you find me in a rough cut, uneven field on a cloudy wet day. And in this video, I'll be showing you how to install a pond. Let's get to it. This is an OACE PE1000. It's a precast pond that I'll be installing. However, the process I'll be showing you is the same for installing any pond liner and can be scaled up or down. First thing to do is mark out the area of the pond you'll be installing. With this pond it has three shelf level depths so I'll be marking out the perimeter shape and interior shelf shapes. For the outsides and the shelves I'm cutting out the shape with a half moon edging iron and for the centre I use some rope to mark it out then cut it out once I move the pond liner. You can mark out the shape and interior shelves first with rope or marker paint and then cut it out after if you find that way easier. Then once you've cut the shape out in the turf, measure if you've got a precast or work out the depth if you're using a flexible liner of each shelf area and the central depth so you know how deep to dig each area you have cut out. You'll want to allow slightly more with your measurement because you need to line the soil with sand to even out any undulations and create a smooth surface to install the pond onto. Using a fork, lift up the turf from the deepest part of the pond, dig it in square sections and place them to one side. This will make it easier to reuse them on areas such as the side banks that you may need to create to level the pond. Now you're digging the deepest part of the pond because this will most likely be the centre and once this is dug you can work your way around the outside of the pond digging the different shelf heights. I'm piling the soil in a tum bag close to the pond to keep the grass clean and so I can reuse it to fill around the pond liner at the end. The soil type I'm digging is a sandy loam mix so very easy to dig with just a spade and shovel. If you have tough soil you may need a fork to loosen it up. So now the centre has been dug out, measure to make sure it's the right depth. Remember to allow extra space for the sand. The next step is to remove the turf from the deepest shelf part as this is the next area you'll want to dig. By digging the pond out this way you can stand in the centre and dig the other parts standing up by cutting it from the side rather than the top. This makes it quicker to dig as less movement needed and it puts less strain on your back. Then continue your way around the other shelves working from the deepest shelf to the shallowest. While digging the pond you want to allow more space on the sides to backfill with the sands. Keep an eye on the shape of the pond as you dig, make sure the sides slope or are straight in the right places to match the pond mould you have or the shape you're trying to create if you're using a flexible liner as it's quite easy to get carried away with the digging. Here's the hole for the pond dug out following the shape of the liner. You can see the different shelf levels needed and how the soil type changes as you go down. Then you want to offer up the pond liner to the hole. When I first put the pond liner in you can see it's a little bit tight on one of the sides so rather than forcing it it's much better to reassess and take off another wheelbarrow of soil off the side so it fits nicely. After that you're ready to line the base and shelves with the sand and install and level the pond. When you put the sand in you can always use your spirit level to screed over the sand which is by pulling it back in a level motion to make sure that that base and the shelves are nicely level. Make sure the base and shelves are firm and there are no air pockets. You can test this by gently banging the base to hear for a hollow sound. It is extremely important that your pond is level in every direction so you're able to fill it up with water to the top. In this scenario, the right of the pond 
is matching with the ground level and the left of the pond is raised. Now the pond is level and firm on the base and the shelves, it is time to start filling the sides. You can do this with a sand and soil dig out as long as it's free from sharp or large rocks. In this scenario, as I'm going to be banking the soil around parts of the pond, I'm collapsing those sides in to fill the gaps. Once again, make sure there are no air pockets for the liner to expand into when it's full of water. Use your hands to firm the soil, don't over compact, otherwise the liner will bow. So I just had to charge the camera as the battery died, but since doing that, I've been going around the edge, packing this in, and also remembering to push it underneath this rim here so it doesn't sink when the water goes in. I've just got around to this area, which I'm going to pack this soil in, push it in. So that's knocking the soil down the back of the pond so there's no air pockets or holes so the pond doesn't sink or move in the years to come. So it's just pushing all this in and then remembering to put some soil under this lip here. And I'm going to be dressing it with this turf that was dug up from the pond dig out all around the edge here. So you just got to make sure that your pond is perfectly level. So I couldn't change this area here. This is the highest point and I didn't want to dig the pond in too deep where this side would have been level with the lawn. Otherwise this would have been dug down very, very deep. All the mud and sludge would have just washed in and would have had quite a bad algae problem straight away. So you can see the lip is raised all around the outside of the pond. So when it does rain, soil and debris aren't going to wash in. Now it's just a case of creating the banks around the sides with the soil dig out and laying the turf back down to hold the banks together and blend in with the surroundings. So the next task is to fill it with stones and pebbles. I'm going to put plants in it but I'll have to wait till the spring as it is winter now. So to prep for the plants I'm going to be installing gravel in the marginal trays and cobbles and some larger rocks at the base to help with amphibians and insects. So this water you can see around here is obviously just any soil that's flicked up in there. So that's okay, that's going to form the silt layer in this native wildlife pond. So what's going to happen over the next couple of days is the silt's going to filter through the rocks and pebbles around here and create sediment below, which is great for the insects. Make sure your stones are okay to use in water and they're not going to change the pH of the water. Usually they'll have a little sign on them like this. Once again the camera died so I just thought I'd crack on. I've still got the centre to do but the outside's complete. I've put these little aspects to allow for frogs, newts and other amphibians to get in and out of the pond. Obviously long term these sort of branches and bits will rot but they can easily be replaced. And you can see the different sizes of pebbles and stones. So I think I've got four or five different sizes which allow for all these sort of holes and little caves and caverns that various insects 
and amphibians can live in. And then the different sized stones on these sort of shelves and platforms allow for sediment to fall through to the base. And when they get planted out, it allows the plants to anchor their roots in here and feed from the uh, sediment from the base. Right, let's get the centre done. Like this is pretty perfect for a pond. It's got a flat base, but then it, when you lay it, it has a almost cave under there for the aquatic life to live and hide from predators. So that's the pond complete. All that's left now is to fill with water and add the plants in the spring. So we're probably going to put around six to eight plants around the marginal area. A couple of lilies in the centre, maybe a flag iris on one of the shelves, and something else in between. So you don't need a huge amount of plants, as they'll soon start spreading. And a few oxygenating plants, actually. Last thing I wanted to mention before I go is that your hose pipe or tap water can have a higher pH or lower pH than neutral. So the best thing to do is let it fill up naturally with the rain. That's it for this video. Hope you found it useful and entertaining. If you did, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers. Before I go, I thought I'd discuss the advantages and disadvantages of installing a precast and a flexible liner. The advantages of installing a pond flexible liner is that you can create whatever shape you like with as many different sized shelves within the pond as well as really making it bespoke to your planting scheme as different aquatic plants require different water depths. This makes it a lot easier to install when you're digging out the shape because you can change it as you're digging. However, something to consider is a pond liner does need to overhang at the top to be held down by pins, soil or rocks. Also, it can arguably puncture and leak easier but I've found if you do the right prep work and buy a good quality liner, it's very tough and this should not happen. The advantages of a precast pond is that it's extremely strong and durable. The size and shape is thought out for you and is easier to clean. However, you are restricted by the shape, so you have to make sure you cut out the correct mold size, which makes insulation less flexible. It also does not give to ground movement and could warp or bow, but once again, if it is good quality and installed properly, this shouldn't happen.